This will be a brief explanation on how internet browsers work. We all know what internet browsers are and what we do, but many of us don't really know how they function in the background. There are tons of internet browsers to choose from, including Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Safari by Apple, and Google Chrome, just to name a few. As soon as you type in an address into your browser's address bar or click on a hyperlink on the internet, your browser starts to communicate with other servers around the world. Your browser sends an HTTP request through the internet to the server that runs the website that you are trying to reach. The web server sends back an HTTP response which is read by your browser and is used to display the site. The response contains the website in HTML form which the browser reads and translates to display the website in its complete form as it was meant to be viewed by the user. This process happens every single time you type an address in the address bar or click on a link. <clears throat> the HTTP request contains three parts. The first is the request line, which includes a command, the re web page requested, and the HTTP version number. The request header includes the browser in use, the date, and some other information useful to the server. The request body is optional and contains information that is sent to the server. Here's a sample request. We can see the command followed by the website and the HTTP version number. <clears throat> In blue is the request header which includes the date, the browser in use, and some more information. An HTTP response also contains three parts. The response status which includes the HTTP version number again, a status code, and a reason phrase, which is a description that explains the status code. The response header is optional information, including the server being used, the date, and the URL of the web page. Finally, the response body, which contains the website written in HTML format. Here's a sample HTTP response. In red is the response status, which includes the HTTP version number, the response code, and then the reason phrase. For this particular example, the code is 200, and that code means OK. In blue is the response header, which includes the date, the server, and the information about the website. Finally, in black is the uh, HTML code for the website. That's used for, by the browser to display the site. Here's a little image of the process. You get on your computer, type in a website, and it's sent HTTP requests through the internet to the publisher where the web server is. They send back an HTTP response, which includes HTML documents to help the browser display the website. Let's look at this process a little bit more. Your computer in blue and the web server are in red. They're both connected via the internet. So when you get on one of your browsers and type in a website into the address bar, they begin to communicate. You hit enter and an HTTP request is made. Remember, this is what they look like. It's a file containing this information. That is sent through the internet to the web server. The web server receives the request, reads it, and creates a response. Remember, that looks like this. That's sent back through the internet and then is used to display your website. Remarkably, this process takes less than one second, depending on your internet connection. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's the main language for creating websites and is made up by elements surrounded by tags. The tags tell the browser how to display the material. Here are some tags that are often used in HTML. The first is the image tag. It is used to display an image. Next is the paragraph tag. Content written between these tags will show up as a paragraph in paragraph form on the final website. <coughs> Things written in between the body tags are so that the website 
However, the browser knows that the material inside these tags is the body of the website and is not to be included in the title or header. The header tags tell the browser that material within them is used for the header and the title and is not to be put into the main body of the website. Here's an image so that we can go over where some of these tags would be used. The header tag is used for titles such as what appears in the tabs in your browser. An image tag is used to display an image. On the coding for the website, you'll see these tags and the location of the image in between them. But when the browser reads this and displays the website, it simply f displays the image. <coughs> Body tags would be used in the main body of the website to display all of the content. There are lots of programs you can use to make websites, including Dreamweaver, Microsoft Expression, a free online program called HTML Kit, and software provided by a company called Coffee Cup. There's many more than this, but these applications are simple and some automatically add the tags for you. Internet browsers are constantly working behind the scenes when we're constantly clicking on links. They're always communicating with web servers across the world to bring us the websites we desire. HTML coding can be confusing at first, but it can be fun to learn and fun to create your own web pages. Personal servers can be easily obtained through a variety of vendors. I hope you learned a lot.